Welcome to Excel 2010 Database Features. I'm Trainer Lori. What are database features? Well, it's, it, Excel is actually a small version of Access, even at Oracle. You can store over a million records now. In fact, a million forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-six. Well, we're going to learn about the tools to build it right, data entry tools, and query tools. First, let's look at tools for building the database. There's six steps. The first is you must have a header row. So um, above all your data, make sure that you put in a header row that explains what goes in it. But then you have to format it so that Excel knows it's, it's a header row. And to do that, you simply bold it. You can format it any other way you'd like, but you must bold it for Excel to understand that it is a header row. Then you want to make sure that your data goes down, not to the right. A lot of times I've seen people's databases where it goes down like this. The problem with that is, uh, see, you can see that the headers are on the left and the data moves out to the right. The problem with that is you cannot manipulate it and you certainly cannot take it into access. So to make it easier, you want to put it so that the headers are across the top. But what happens if you've already got your headers in the first column? Well, there's a wonderful tool that a lot of people have never seen before on the right mouse click called Pay Special Transpose. You simply copy the data, put your cursor where you want the data to appear in the one cell you want it to uh, start in, and then right click, choose Pay Special, and notice this is the Transpose option. If you hover over it, it'll actually say Transpose. You can also find it by clicking on Pay Special and it will automatically put your headers in the first row and all your data going down exactly the way we want a database. Step number four is no blank rows. A lot of times we want a blank row in there to separate data, but Excel sees that as the end of your database, so you don't want uh, blank rows. Instead, I would recommend that you use borders. Um, so if under uh, Home, you find the option for borders, and then you want to delete those blank rows. And here's a quick way to do it. Instead of having to go to each blank row and hoping that you find them all and then right clicking and deleting, instead we'll use the Go To option. Go To is under Control G. That's my favorite way of finding it. And then you'll see that there's a special option in there. Under Special, one of your options is Blanks. And when you choose that, it will highlight all the blanks in your database, all the blank rows, and you can delete them all at once. So you don't have to worry about missing or taking time to go through and searching for them individually. Step number five is to separate critical information. You can see that in this row, in this column, that uh, the first name and the last name are all in the same cell. And a lot of times we create databases like that thinking that I don't really care if they're separated. But in a database, the more you separate the data, the easier it is to manipulate. So what we want to do is to separate it or normalize the data. To, uh, in Excel is a great tool. In fact, if I need to do it in Access, I'll bring it into Excel and use this tool and then take it back into Access. It's under Data, Text to Columns. It's a three-step wizard. The first step asks, is it delimited? In other words, is it separated by something? And yes, it is. It's separated by a space. The next step says, well, what is it separated by? And by default, it will always have tab, but I check space because the, this text happens to be separated by a space. And then it asks, where would you like to put it? Now be careful because it will always overwrite whatever's in the next column. By default, it will just put the data in the next column. So make sure you have several blank columns next to where you're separating this data. And then when you hit finish, look what it did. In fact, I moved it into the next uh, column over and it is now separated first name from last name. And then if you want, you can delete the uh, first column. Very cool. Number six, no leading spaces. A lot of times people want a leading space so that uh, the data isn't up against the side of the, the wall of the cell. Uh, so they put a space in there. Well, the problem with spaces is Excel doesn't know how to read a space. No database does. Uh, so it, then it doesn't see the regular data that's in there. A tool on the Home tab that's called Indent. And if you want to change it down from one space to more than one, then use the um, dialog box that opens the dialog box, and you can 
change the indent to two or three spaces if you prefer. This way Excel can read it and uh, it knows that it's simply formatting. It's not something that needs to read. Once you create the data, you'll want to select the data and name it database. You select the data simply by clicking in it and hit Control A and it should highlight all of your data and only your data. And then you go up to the name range of the name box and type in database. Excel will then recognize it as a database uh, for pivot tables and other uh, great advanced functions. Now we'll look at tools for data entry. Now that we've got the database created, we want to add more data to it. The first one is it's that Wiley first column, that first uh, uh, row there is your header row. And sometimes as you're doing data entry, you move down and you lose your header row. Well, if you've already worked with freeze panes in the past, you may not know that in 2010 it's been moved to the View tab. It's now under View. And uh, when you choose it, it, one of the options is do you want to freeze the top row? So it's very easy to use now. So you just say freeze the top row. Now as you scroll down, the first row stays put and only the bottom uh, under the first row will move. Now here's a great tool that is hidden. It's no longer available on the ribbon. Uh, so it, you, you won't come across it by accident probably like you could have in 2003. This is a form for data entry. How convenient is that? It takes all the headers based on your field names up here and it automatically puts them in and you just hit tab 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 and, and do your data entry then click on the new button. What it's doing is going to the bottom row and putting it in for you but it's an easy way to do it. It's very convenient. So how can I find it if it's not on the ribbon? Well what I've done is added it to my quick access toolbar. You notice on the quick access toolbar there is a drop down arrow. Click that and one of your options is more commands. And when you go into more commands, look for the commands that are not in the ribbon because it is not there anymore. Click form, add, and then you can have it on your quick access toolbar as well. The next one is great if you want to make sure that people put in the correct options. For example, we only do business in certain countries and I want them to be able to choose it from the drop down and all they have to do is click on it. So it seems like a hard thing to do but it's really easy. First you just need to make your list somewhere. So uh, make sure that one of your sheets has a list on it. Then highlight the, the cells that you want to have as a drop down. Then we go up to data, data validation and under the first tab only, we only need the first tab, say I want to allow a list and by default it will say ignore blank and show an in-cell drop-down. And then it has a, a collapse button. You can go find your source. I had it on a, a sheet called countries and I highlight just the data that I want and it automatically makes it a drop-down. So now my uh, users will just choose from the list instead of uh, try to put in their own. Now that we've put our data in, we uh, know how to put our data into our correctly made database, we want to query the database. We have questions about it. The first thing that you'll want to do is sort. Now, I'm sure you've already found sort. It's available on home, but to do the one on home, you have to click twice. One to say, I want to go into the sort area, and then to choose what kind of sort I want. But if you click on your data tab, uh, you can automatically choose. Uh, which one you want. So you can just say A to Z, Z to A, and what does that do? Uh, that takes my contacts and automatically, let's say I want to go my customer ID, and it automatically sorts them. So simply click in where you want the data to be sorted. There's also a great option to do a custom sort. And with custom sort, you have multiple options. First, uh, when you decide what to sort by, you can just choose from the fields because we've already named them. And it knows that we have headers because they're bold. But you can also check here if, uh, if you didn't bold them. You can choose what to sort on, values, or look at this, cell color font color and cell icon. Those are all new in 2010. Now we talk about this in more detail in our uh, formatting class, in the uh, custom formatting class. But uh, if you have formatted a cell to be a certain color, you can choose that. And you can choose the order then if I want what color I want to be on top, which is very convenient. Or I can choose from custom list. Now one of the options here is it's custom list.
When I do that, if I've made my own list and I've put it in the custom list, and I can add a new one here if I haven't already done it, then it will sort uh, based on, for example, your locations, your business locations, or whatever list you want. And this is probably the best thing of all. You used to only be able to sort by three. Now there were workarounds, and everybody's used workarounds to try to sort by more than three levels. But now you can sort by up to 64 levels simply by adding a new level here. So that's very convenient. And of course our filter. This is probably one of the best tools that most people who are using databases know about. You simply click, notice my header now, and I click filter. And look what happens to my header. All my my entire header row now has a drop down, and that drop down not only allows me to sort, but it also allows me to choose what values I want to sort by. And I can deselect all, and then just go in there and choose by which ones I want. In 2010, and now you can have 10,000 unique values displayed in here. So that's a lot of data you can sort by. And then finally, this is wonderful. It's a great tool I used to have to go into Access for. But uh, now there is a, a, an actual uh, helper uh, that will allow you to remove duplicates. It's under Data. And now here's a tip. Uh, for example, Liz Nixon and Elizabeth Nixon are duplicates. However, first name is not duplicate, only last name. The title are duplicates, but it doesn't look like it, and Excel will not recognize them as duplicates because they are different, however the address is. So make sure that you only select the columns you know to be exact duplicates, otherwise it won't find them. And when it's done, it will simply find it and remove it. It will not show you which ones are uh, duplicates, but that's a very fast way to remove duplicates. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.